right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and today I'm going to be reviewing the amazing The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley, which is probably my favourite book of the year so far. I spoke about how much I loved this book in my April wrap up and I think I also said that I would either do an individual review on it or a review alongside her second book, The Bedlam Stacks. But I haven't read The Bedlam Stacks yet, for one thing, and also I thought it would be quite nice to give this book its own video because I loved it so much. This will be a completely spoiler-free review. I really, really love this. It's one of my favourite books I've read for a long time. Like, it's up there with The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setfield, which is my favourite modern novel ever. Like, I just... I really fell in love with this book a lot, and I just... I want to rave about it so much. To talk a little bit about what this book is about, it starts in Victorian London in 1883 and it's about a young man called Nathaniel, Nathaniel for short. Nathaniel is a clerk for the civil service, he works in the telegram office. He, as a younger man, wanted to be a musician and he loves music but he has a widowed sister and two nephews to support. And then two things happen which change his world entirely. One, he gets home one day and finds a pocket watch on his pillow and he has no idea who's put it there, who's left it there and why. And then a few months later he gets caught up in an explosion from a bomb left by Irish nationalists. And he ends up finding the maker of this pocket watch that has ended up on his pillow. And it is a Japanese clockmaker called Kate Amari who is living elsewhere in London. And in meeting Kate Amari kind of changes the course of his existence. And then meanwhile there is another plot going on. Grace wants to be a scientist, she's at university but her parents want her to leave and get married and they're very keen for her to start on a very conventional Victorian life which is not what she wants to do. And she has a friendship with a Japanese student at the university as well which is also part of the plot. And Grace and Nathaniel's plot lines kind of end up overlapping in a particular way. I want to talk about the things that I loved about it and also the things that I thought were really good about it, which obviously are the same, but I think there are also a lot of reasons why I especially love this. Like, you know when you read a book and you feel like it was written for you almost? Not exactly, but I feel the same about The Thirteenth Tale, one of those books that is so just so utterly up my street. Not just brilliant, because both this and The Thirteenth Tale are incredible, but they're also just so thoroughly my kind of book. I mentioned before how I really love it when books set in the Victorian period deal with things that aren't explored in the novels that were actually written in the Victorian period, for example LGBTQ plus themes or characters who aren't white. And I really like the fact that of the four main characters, two of them are Japanese, or possibly of the three main characters one is Japanese. Grace's friend at the university isn't a massive, massive character. But I just thought that the way Natasha Pulley looks at Japanese subcultures within Victorian London and what it was like to be an immigrant living in the Victorian period are just brilliant. I really like Japanese literature and I really like Japanese history and culture and I've enjoyed quite a lot of Japanese classics so I think that's part of the reason why I especially love this book because I found the way this book looks at Japanese history and Japanese nationalism especially in comparison to Irish nationalism and ways in which that ja Japan did and didn't engage with the rest of the world and especially with the West in the 19th century. Like I said I find Japanese history really interesting so that was something I just adored in this book. Another thing I loved in this book that made it wonderful for me is that it has a really good balance of like darker themes with quirkiness. Obviously there are a lot of things that are problematic about the Victorians and obviously when we look at the Victorian period there's a lot of dark stuff like I don't really want to go back and live in the Victorian period but another thing that I really like about Victorian novels and about looking at Victorian history and culture is that the Victorians were quite weird like there's a lot of quirky odd stuff going on as well they were quite eccentric and at times almost ridiculous and I love the fact that Natasha Pulley engages both with the more problematic and dark stuff in Victorian culture but also with the weirdness. Like I think one of my issues with The Crimson Petal and the White, which is the neo-Victorian book I read recently which I didn't like, is that it's so dark and like unrelentingly dark, whereas this I think had a lovely balance of dealing with problematic aspects of Victorian culture but also being really really fun as well, which was lovely. Like Gilbert and Sullivan just crop up at one point in this book, they just like appear and get a cameo which was really fun. And the use of sort of clockwork as a motif was really really fun. Obviously Kate Amori, the clockmaker, uses a lot of clockwork but he doesn't just make clocks, he also has a clockwork octopus called Katsu who just like runs around his house which is so fun. And this book also has a touch of magic in, there are some supernatural elements which I loved actually, I thought they worked really really well. I think this, like The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton, has just the right amount of magic in. It's not too much, it doesn't like take over the story, it doesn't feel like this is a fantasy book, but it has 
the right touch of magic to make the plot work, to make the emotional impact stronger, and just to like add fun to the book. It is an incredibly fun book and a really really enjoyable read. I read it pretty much in one day when I was on a holiday in April and it was just such an utter joy to read. But I do also think it deals with complicated themes in a really interesting and great way. I think the way it looks at Victorian gender issues and other prejudices including racism were really well done. I also really liked Nathaniel's place in the civil service and he kind of moves around within the civil service in the book. I have a real soft spot for books about the civil service, that sounds so silly, but I find the Victorian civil service fascinating. I also think the way the book looks at kind of loneliness is is fascinating. Kate Amori is quite a lonely man I think until he meets Nathaniel and Nathaniel is also quite lonely and their friendship and relationship is so powerful and poignant like all the more so because both of them have been not exactly outcast, just a little bit lonely and a little bit unfulfilled in their life. Nathaniel is quite a young man and the way it looks at kind of his youth and his kind of coming into himself, the sacrifices he has made for his sister and for his family, but also the lack of satisfaction he feels in his life is so interesting. Like I thought he was such a great character. In fact, I thought all the characterization was really, really good. Nathaniel is a, a wonderful character and there are so many sort of little details about his personality which make him feel so much more real. His, his love of music, his synesthesia and the fact that he views music as colours, the duty he feels to his sister but also the struggles he has at being kind of lonely within the, the job and the life that he leads. Grace and Matsumoto and Keita are all wonderful characters as well. In fact I think Grace was a fascinating character because I didn't like her for quite a lot of the book but I also felt that I did get her and I did understand her and I think she's a very sort of well-rounded character because you understand why she acts as she does though sometimes she does things which are quite dubious and Kata too at times it's quite hard to tell exactly what his motivations are especially because of the area of magic that kind of surrounds him. It's hard sometimes to tell what his motivation is and yet I think he is a brilliant character and you do come to really feel for him and the characterization is just it's so effectively achieved. I mentioned already what a simple joy this book was to read and I think that's partly because the plotting was so good and it had a nice balance of interesting themes, great characterization and a really exciting dramatic plot with curious things happening all the time. The element of magic really adds to that I think and it was just plotted incredibly well. I love the way things came together Together, especially in terms of the interaction of Grace and Thaniel's storylines and things that kind of crop up later that were mentioned in the beginning and how they all just come together in a wonderful way. I thought it was done so well. I think a final thing I want to talk about in this book was how emotionally engaging I found it. I found it an incredibly gripping read. Partly I think the fact that I read it in a day shows that but also probably helped as well with my engagement in it. But I found it a really, really powerful, moving book. And there were moments, like really small moments that nearly brought me to tears in how beautiful they were. I wish I could tell you about them, but they would be spoilery. I loved it. It was so beautiful and so great. And I just, I can't recommend this enough. Like I wish more people would read it. I thought it was wonderful. And like I said, there are some specific reasons why I personally adored it, possibly more than other people would, because it's so up my street. But I also just think it's a fantastic novel with wonderful themes and brilliant characterization and a great plot line and a really interesting look at the odd intricacies of Victorian life that I just, I loved it. I loved it so much. So yes, there we go. As you may guess, I would highly, highly recommend this book. My favourite book of the year so far. Might end up being my favourite book of the year, but we'll see. It was incredible and magical and brilliant. Please let me know down in the comments if you've read this book and what you thought of it. And yes, I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.